Good day, my name is Serena Isaacs. I am a senior lecturer and research psychologist at the Department of Psychology at the University of the Western Cape in South Africa. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listening to my presentation, which is entitled Developing a Family Resilience Strengthening Program in a South African Rural Community. Um, and so you will see at the top a list of people I'd like to acknowledge who were integral or groupings were integral in the development of the program and in completion of the study, which is Rural Impact, which is the NGO that I worked with primarily, and the National Research Foundation of South Africa, who provided the funding for this project. So a bit of background to the study. This is actually part of my PhD study that I started a few years ago. Um, I graduated in 2018 and the project is still ongoing. Um, and although the intervention was going to be uh, implemented in this year because of COVID, that has had to be moved to next year. Um, so just in terms of the, the background to the study and why um, I wanted to do something within this field, uh, my central thesis is that family is important and that family serves as the primary developmental context for children and for individuals of that system because a family is a system, it's a microcosm of the community. And so they really provide a foundation for a child's trajectory. And so if a family is a system, a microcosm of a community, part of a bigger system, my thesis is that if we have strong families, theoretically, we can build even stronger communities. And so I really come from this perspective and that, you know, some families tend to do so well, some families don't do so well. What is that big difference? And the one thing that, you know, after a lot of research is that we realized is that perhaps the difference is a level of resilience. Um, whether you look at it from an individual perspective, a family perspective, or a community perspective. And so how do we then go about perhaps developing intervention which can strengthen some of these processes? Just to give you an overview of the study, um, this, the study was really made up of three phases. Um, the aim of this presentation is really to focus on phase three, which is the other little blocks in blue on the right. The first two phases have been presented before, they've also been published on. But uh, just to give you an overview, the method of the study was we used an intervention mapping design, uh, which is really multi-method. Typically it has five stages. This study only did the first three because to do all five stages of the intervention mapping process for a PhD study was just a little bit too big um, in terms of scope. However, the last two phases or last two stages of the intervention mapping design is being used in my postdoc, which I'm now currently doing. So the objective of phase one was to define the intervention objective. So what would be the aim of an intervention that could increase family resilience. And so in order to do that, we used an explanatory mixed methodological sequential design. We used quantitative and qualitative processes, specifically a survey, which field workers within the community distributed to a total of, after we cleaned the data, a total of 656 uh, participants. Um, they, after those results were um, analyzed, presented to different cohorts within the community, and we then conducted focus groups with different cohorts in order to get their impressions on the quantitative results. And do they think that it's accurate? Was there anything else that we did not think about? And so what came out of that phase was that family connectedness is something that needs to be improved within the community. Um, that uh, people need, uh, uh, people not only need better access to, but they also need a lot more information on utilizing social and economic resources. Um, and what also came out of the focus groups was that there needs to be an emphasis on developing communication processes 
uh, better communication processes within the family. And so that was phase one. And then we moved on to phase two, which we completed using a systematic review. So in terms of intervention mapping, uh, the second stage is really to select suitable theoretical methods and practical strategies to develop your intervention. I felt that um, using a systematic review was one of the better ways to do it. They're not the, you know, it's not the only one, but could give us um, quite a, 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 a broad understanding of what has been done before empirically. Um, and so I conducted a systematic review to identify theoretical and best practice models of interventions, which were focused on the family. And from that, what I found was that where interventions were focused on family, a strengths-based approach was favored, that a psychoeducative approach was key, that developing skills through different activities also kept people engaged, as well as home visits. It's also far, it was in one of the studies to, um, found to be one of the best strategies to increase retention. Then improving communication, between family members seem to be a central focus on any intervention with families, as well as increasing emotional support for significant others of people who are close to particular family members. This was also found especially because a lot of the interventions that are found was actually individually based. Either somebody has some diagnosis with a psychological or uh, physiological and they needed the support of the family. And so families were sort of an add-on component to an existing individual treatment plan. I um, also found that flexibility within the programs was a very much favored best practice. And so not everything is so, um, so rigid in a sense, and that community input was also essential. If there's no community input, no community buy-in, a community-based program is not really going to work. Um, the, one of the recommendations that was also consistent across these programs that we found to be quite successful was that it be manualized and people have something tangible uh, to learn from as well. Um, so, so that was, yeah, that was found to be quite a big, um, a big approach or, and, and this is ultimately what we did with the program as well. And so we get to the findings of the study, um, or the findings that I'm going to present to you today, which is really how did we come about going from phase one, phase two, to actually developing what I now call the Family Resilience Strengthening Program. So I did this by means of a, um, of a Delphi method. Um, what a Delphi is, is usually giving a group of so-called experts, and I say so-called because um, I like to problematize the word experts. Who is the expert and who decided um, who is the expert? This is the kind of questions that kind of go around in my mind, but I'll get to, to that in a second. What I want to just show is this community that I've worked in, don't have much time left. Um, the community is a rural community, it's predominantly a fishing community, a very small town of about 6,200 people. And while on the one side, it's very nice to visit during the holidays because the beaches are so, so beautiful. On the other hand, we also have um, low employment opportunities, very high alcohol use rates, very high substance use rates, and very high drop. Um, so very high uh, school dropout rates. Um, interestingly, the community at the time, although I do know that a high school or a secondary school is um, in the works, um, there is in fact only a primary school there. And so a lot of the children actually only make it up to um, primary school. So based on the findings of phase one and two, I created a bit of a schematic with an overview of, of the findings from phase one and two, put that together and then started a process of searching for experts who could advise on what should we focus on within the program given the aims, given the objectives that we want to achieve that the community has said themselves are problematic. 
for some of the issues that are that are problematic within families. And so going through um, some of the authors, um, researchers, clinicians that have written some of the papers in phase two, I started contacting um, a different experts in child, family, community resilience, in family development, child development, um, in intervention development, and asking them based on your experience, what do you think should be included in this program? So round one, so this was an international groupings from the UK, Portugal, America, Australia, South Africa, um, and really asking them based on the findings of phase one and two, what would you agree or disagree with in terms of the performance objectives of the program? What would the target population need to learn or acquire in order to meet these objectives? And what needs to change in order for us to see that there is actually a change taking place? And so um, participants, um, this panel of experts really needed to give qualitative feedback on those three questions. Um, based on that, I did a content analysis and then um, sort of group them into themes. Okay, so it was a sort of thematic content analysis. Emailed them back and asked them, could you please rank these in terms of what you think is the most important? And a lot of this then became the content for the program that we have today. Round three of the Dalfi was really interesting. I did not use the original panel of experts, but I used another panel of experts, which was five people from the community itself who worked within the service, um, within the, the social services programs that they have there. And together we developed, we really had two big findings from that as one was the content from the program based on everything phase one, phase two, part of phase three, as well as how we would structure and format the program. And so this is what we decided. This is what the family resilience program is sort of going to look like. We have four objectives. The first one is to have families reflect on and understand family members' idea of family, to increase family connectedness, to use social and economic resources, but more importantly, to increase knowledge of and how do we go about using that and what rights are actually available to participants um, to actually uh, locate and access, use these resources. And then of course, to increase communication among uh, family members. Um, so I'm not going to go into all of this in too much detail. I literally have two minutes and 17 seconds left. Um, but the, these slides will also be available somewhere, I'm sure. Um, but this is just basically to show you that each module has a theme, um, what that theme means, what activities are available in order to meet the, the aims of, of each of the modules. And so each one has been very well thought out. The manuals have been identified. Um, and so this is a nice schematic of phase one, phase two, phase three, how all of it sort of came together using an intervention mapping method, using the participatory action research approach that was very important um, in order for a successful community-based um, family intervention um, and just sort of how it was all brought together. So I'm just going to spend a minute just to talk about what worked within the study. What worked was a previous established relationship with the community, with the NGO, ultimately was my gatekeeper into this community. Um, the relationship has been coming on for years. And so when they approached us about this particular issue, you know, we're like, we are going to help you and this is how we are going to do it. And uh, this is how we think that we should do it. What do you think we're going to use this approach? So it was a constant back and forth. And so what was very valuable and what worked within the study was that the NGO and other stakeholders were co-creators of knowledge within the study. It's more than merely presenting the results and giving opinions on the results, but a shared ownership of this program. Also found that there were different catalysts um, within the project, which just also made me realize how important it is to consider the effects of each research process and how it could be 
changing somebody's life. And then, of course, like I said, the quality of the relationship, the communication, and then importantly, what happens after the research as well. And what are you actually going to, that is my time. Um, but also more importantly, how you are going to action everything that you have promised throughout this process throughout this process as well and so that is also what i would like to encourage you so as amazing as it is that we have all of these wonderful things as tangible physical thing that came out of this project this project is still continuing um and yeah and that is all i would like to say thank you so much for um taking the time to listen to this presentation goodbye <laughs>